As all spiritual traditions affirm, there is more to existence than the material universe. We are more than mere animals or machines. The truth is that we each have an inner core of consciousness that is immortal and originates from outside the matrix. This core, called spirit, is the origin of our free will and our sentience. It is the heart of our soul, the very fulcrum of our being. It is the only part of us that is permanent and real in an absolute sense. Spirit is the source of our wisdom and lucidity, our inner beauty and harmony, justice and mercy, kindness and warmth, compassion and understanding, integrity and nobility. These ideals are not arbitrary human inventions, but qualities intrinsic to spirit. Whenever we express these ideals, we radiate a divine influence into the world. Spirit comes from a metaphysical realm brimming with vitality, whose laws are perfect, absolute, and just. This divine realm has been called the kingdom of heaven, eternity, or true reality. It exists beyond space-time, beyond even the etheric and astral regions where the occult influences of the control system originate. The problem is that we are here, but not from here. We are intruders into the matrix. Spirit is a foreign substance that the matrix and its antibodies are trying to neutralize. Why? Because spirit represents everything that the matrix is not. It is the only thing that the matrix cannot fully control or understand. Everything else, from our egos or intellects, to our physical, etheric, and astral bodies, to human civilization itself is well within its grasp. As dual beings, we are therefore caught between two jurisdictions, the worldly and the divine. Each has its own laws and principles. Each has its own value systems, and each has its own presiding powers. One is spiritual death, the other spiritual life. Our lives take place at the intersection between these two realms. When you look around you, or look within at the contents of your own mind and emotions, you're witnessing an overlap of these incompatible dynamics. Externally, the intersection consists of the matrix and the divine realm exerting their respective influence over the physical, etheric, and astral environment. The events in your life are a mixture of these influences. Even your physical surroundings contain both layers, as there is both ugliness and beauty, chaos and harmony, entropy and growth everywhere you look. Both exist simultaneously before your eyes. And cynics are those who see only half the picture. Through a shift in perspective, you can bring one layer into better focus. By doing so, that layer is also brought into better physical manifestation through the phenomenon of mind over matter. Because mind affects matter at the quantum level, an inner consciousness shift will create an outer physical shift. In other words, the inner and outer worlds are loosely coupled. The probability of personal life events changes in response to deep changes in your mental and emotional landscape. The more you live from your spirit instead of matrix programming, the more your external circumstances come under the jurisdiction of the divine realm. Spirit affects reality in a synchronistic way, thereby bypassing the deterministic laws of the matrix. Life literally turns around and begins pointing in a new direction, and miracles become the norm. That is how the kingdom of heaven begins manifesting on earth, one person at a time. It is done by untangling yourself from the clutches of matrix programmed delusions and reclaiming physicality in the name of divinity. Internally, the intersection between higher and lower is expressed as spirit and ego battling over your mental and emotional landscape. Ego is an artificial personality created when the intellect is programmed with all the rules, fears, and desires of the matrix. Everyone has an ego. It acts as an avatar through which spirit can conveniently interact with the rest of the matrix world. Your everyday sense of self comes from spirit shining through the mask of ego. But like an actor losing himself in his character, spirit can get lost in the ego, and that's when things go wrong. In that case, matrix influences drown out the voice of spirit. This is actually the norm for most people. They live life from their evolutionary instincts, hormonal drives, and ego desires and insecurities. Spirit is too faint within them to be heard, or else is entirely absent. Only when spirit grows sufficiently strong can it override the ego and transmute it. You can do this by consistently exercising your spirit instead of feeding your ego, providing you know how to distinguish between them. You must have the awareness, honesty, and humility to acknowledge when you are acting out of selfish or dishonorable motives. Those who value ego more than the truth are servants of the matrix. To make any progress, one must consistently sacrifice ego on the altar of truth. The goal of esoteric training is not to eliminate the ego entirely, though, as that would make you ineffectual as a human being, but to bring it under the control of spirit, to reprogram it with a new set of priorities. 
Then instead of a prison warden keeping spirit locked up within, the purified ego becomes more like a knight carrying the commands of spirit out into the world. What the matrix normally uses to subjugate spirit then becomes the means through which spirit unravels the matrix. This reversal of flow is what we are after. Spirit over mind, mind over matter. To be what the matrix is not, we must do what the followers of the matrix are not doing. Too many people have sloppy thinking and personalities shaped solely by societal expectations, valuable authority figures, biological drives, and the five senses. Therefore we must sharpen our minds, purify our personalities, and place these in service of spiritual intuition and noble ideals. Only through a higher guidance system that transcends logic and physical perception can we ever hope to exit the cages of conformity. Mind and heart, reason and intuition, intellect and spirit must work together, for each alone is not enough. That is the first and most important key to transcending the matrix control system.